Hey, how's it going? I'm Russ. This is Dapper Dividends. Thank you for swinging on by the channel and investing a little bit of your time with me. Hopefully going to get you a good return on that investment. Really cool thing when I got home, there was two white envelopes in the mailbox. And if you haven't been following along, we've decided to get our almost both teenage daughters. I have a 13 year old and a 12 year old daughter daughters and we're gonna we're gonna give them their allowance and put it on a debit card so they can get used to to the plastic and personal finance and we're gonna work with them and we can monitor their limits so we're gonna make a video coming up about that really cool it was very interesting giving these little people that I created their very first piece of plastic and while it is a debit card I hope I train them right because you can get into trouble as I know from my earlier years with those pieces of plastic. We're right back at it with some more stock analysis. We're going to grind out another video. This time it's by special request from Mike in Milltown, New Jersey. Thank you, Mike, for that uh, suggestion to do it on Starbucks. And I figured why not? I am long Starbucks. I am an investor in Starbucks. So let's do a little bit of analysis, a little bit of company history, go through some numbers, see what they're going to be doing in the future, and then I'll tell you if I would buy Starbucks where it is at today in 2021 and beyond. Starbucks was founded by Jerry Baldwin, Gordon Bowker, and Zeb Siegel in 1971 and was a roaster and retailer of whole bean and ground coffee, tea and spices with a single store in Seattle's Pike Place Market. The company's name comes from Starbuck, the first mate of the Pequod, who was a fictional character in the novel Moby Dick by Herman Melville, written in 1851, and they are headquartered in Seattle, Washington. Zev Siegel would leave the company in 1980 to pursue other interests, and in 1982, Howard Schultz, a sales representative for Hammerplast, from which Starbucks bought drip coffee makers, was hired as the head of marketing. Marketing. Schultz left Starbucks in 1985 and started his own coffee chain called Il Giornale, which was an immediate success and decided to purchase the Starbucks company in 1987 when Jerry Baldwin and Gordon Bowker decided to sell it. He combined all his operations under the Starbucks brand and today they have millions of customers served at more than 30,000 retail stores in 78 markets with a mission to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, and one neighborhood at a time. Starbucks locations serve hot and cold drinks, whole bean coffee, micro-ground instant coffee known as Via, espresso, cafe latte, full and loose leaf teas including Tivana tea products, evolution fresh juices, frappuccino beverages, la boulanger pastries, and snacks including items such as chips and crackers. Some offerings, including the annual fall launch of the pumpkin spice latte, are seasonal or specific to the locality of the store. Depending on the country, most locations do offer that famous Starbucks free Wi-Fi. So they currently have a market cap of $137 billion, which I'm not exactly sure how much more growth there is in this company, so that's something to keep in mind. When companies start getting really big, they start reaching the limit of their growth, they're still gonna have massive amounts of cash coming in, so they usually pay that out in the form of dividend. At least companies like Starbucks will pay that out and continue to grow that dividend to keep people holding the stock and investing in the stock and purchasing that stock. For reference, McDonald's has a market cap of $173 billion and they feed 1% of the world's population every single day. I'm not sure how much more growth there is for Starbucks. I have a feeling that they're kind of topping out and their current five-year annual revenue growth is negative 15.5%. Their current five-year earnings growth rate is positive 4.2% and expected to grow 21.4% for 2021. Annualized five-year cash flow is negative 8.0%. The current ratio tells us a company's ability to pay off current liabilities with current assets. To make sure that they are liquid in the short term, we're looking for a ratio of one and Starbucks currently is at 1.06. They are liquid. 
The interest coverage ratio, one of my favorites, tells us if a company has enough operating income to cover every $1 of interest expense. Starbucks is currently at 2.72, meaning they have $2.72 of operating income to cover every $1 of interest expense. The median of 44.68 is very healthy and easily able to cover the interest expense. So Starbucks should be able to recover and get closer back to that median as as the world recovers from the COVID lockdowns. The five-year PE average is 44.05 and Starbucks is currently at a whopping 207.96, meaning that you're paying $207.96 for every $1 of earnings that Starbucks produces, which is at nosebleed levels. Since 2018, they have been buying back and reducing shares from 1.39 billion to 1.18 billion in 2020. So if you've held since then, my calculations, if they are correct, you've gained about a 15% increase in company ownership. The current dividend yield is 1.55%, good for an annual payout of $1.80 or 45 cents quarterly. A current payout ratio, according to Seeking Alpha, of 63.06%. They have been growing their dividend for 10 years with a bomb bastic 19.3% five-year growth rate. And we like to see strong institutional ownership, which they are at 71%. Simply Wall Street has a valuation of $69.89 and Yahoo currently has a valuation of $114.08 from 31 analysts for an average of $91.99. Now revenue and cash flow are down, but the earnings are growing, which that is good over a five-year compounded uh, annual basis. But I like to look at where they're going. What is the company saying? I do like that they are committed to the dividend and they are decreasing the amount of shares, thereby increasing all the shareholders uh, ownership stake in the company. So let's take a quick peek at where they say they are going. Of course, they are always building the brand by elevating their experience. They're delivering relevant beverage innovation. I'm not sure how much more they can innovate, but I will be interested to see what they are working on. And like most companies nowadays, they are looking to go more digital with their customer relationship. Again, growing at scale, this is what I love to see, that global footprint accelerating the US and Chinese growth with that global reach. And again, they are committed to the dividend by increasing shareholder returns with stock repurchases and the growing dividend. Currently, I think Starbucks is way high. I think it's way overvalued in this yield starved environment. Investors are just looking for somewhere to park their money to give them a good and somewhat uh, stable cash equivalent return on their money. And uh, companies like Procter & Gamble, Starbucks, Johnson & Johnson, there's been a lot of inflow into them. I don't know when that's going to change and I'm not going to be buying any more Starbucks where it's at. I will continue to hold my shares. I don't drip my shares. I rather collect them and then uh, purposefully retarget allocate those into something that I'm trying to build position in or something I think might be undervalued. There's going to be an inevitable pullback. Morningstar did a study going back 150 years. There is a bear market about once every nine years, over a 150 year span. So there's gonna be a winter, there's seasons to a stock and it's just, you know, it's the middle of summer, it's been a long summer, but winter's coming, nothing goes up straight or down straight. There's always uh, troughs and peaks in between, which I'm waiting for. And as soon as I see Starbucks, somewhere around the 90 to $95 range, I will be adding more there. And I, I really do miss, this is one thing on a side note, as a dividend growth investor, we get so excited for when there's a market correction or a pullback or even better yet, a bear market because our the companies we love when the market pulls back as a whole, they go on sale. And when this share price comes down, the yield goes up. As I always like to say, share goes down, the yield goes up and we get to go home with the cup. He's going the distance. Da -da -da -da. If you don't know that, that's uh, that's cake from from the, I am a product of the 90s. That was my, uh, my, anyway. I'm not buying Starbucks here. If you do, I wouldn't fault you. 
it's sometimes not a bad idea to initiate a position and while it's high, I've been doing that with Pepsi. When it's high, you can always see that, hey, look, I'm below my average. You buy more and then you're even a little more below your average. They're not going anywhere. They are a monolithic, gigantic, well-known brand with a super wide moat. Everybody on the planet virtually knows who Starbucks is. Great company. If you want to start a Tron chair, not financial advice, but I wouldn't fault you for it. But me personally, we're going to wait. We're going to hold off. If I've helped you at any point during this video, please ring the bell. Tell me what you'd like, what you don't like, what you'd like to see. I'm looking, always looking for suggestions. Follow me on Twitter at RustyRam78. Check, check, check me out on Instagram at Dapper Divid. Dens. <laughs> My kids hate that. No, I don't care. I'm going to keep doing it. Thank you for swinging on by. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below because you know where the comments go and we will talk to you in the next video.